All right, everybody, welcome back to the Army-themed Zenith Super Duty build. I am making really good progress on this airplane. I have a good block of days off, and I'm just focused on getting stuff done on this airplane. You can see I've got these top stiffener channels completely riveted in now. The front is done, the top is done. Most of the back rivets are in. I can't reach a couple of these. I'll worry about those later. But what I've worked on most recently is this entire door seal trim that goes all the way from the top up here, down along the bottom, up to the front, and gets riveted to this steel frame. Now, I have this bent and drilled, but it's not riveted yet because I wanna take it off and paint it separately. So now that this side is done, let's get busy on the pilot side. Now the first step in the process is to take this piece here and make it look like this piece. Conveniently, Zenith has all of the bend locations marked on here. You can see right there. Now some of the tools I'm going to be using is a file, a Sharpie, a piece of sandpaper, a square, a wrench, and this tool right here that you may not have if you don't uh, the, the manual does show you how to make the bends with just a wrench. I find this to be a little bit easier and better, so that's what I'm going to use, but you can certainly do it with a crescent wrench. Now the first step, I'm going to take my square, and at each of these bend locations, right in the middle there, I'm just going to draw a line on here, and that is where I will make the bend. So I'll do that for each of those locations. You might notice in the instructions, the first step is to position the doubler against the cabin side, mark the bend lines, we just did that. Then it says down here, start with the middle bends. So let me show you the first two bends I will make. So the middle bends are going to be this one and this one. And so this is where that, where it goes. So these two bends right here are the first two I'll make and that will get me my basic shape. So let's make some bends. Now the way the, the manual shows to do this is to put a crescent wrench on here like this, and then you can bend the crescent wrench to make your bend. What I've found for me personally a little bit better is I use this tool here, and I'm gonna put this edge pretty much right on that line, right like that, and then clamp it down. And that's how I'll make the bend. Now to make this bend when I have it clamped, I'm just gonna hold one edge down on the workbench and I'm gonna take this tool and bend it. And pretty much all I'm doing right now is guessing on the angle. Once I get the other one bent, I'll put it on the airplane and see if I need to bend it more or less. So that one's done. Now, uh, oh, this was the other one I wanted to do right here. Okay. All right, here's my two bends. Let's put it on the airplane and see how close I am. Now I'm just gonna hold this up here like this. If I hold the middle flat, I wanna check this one. So this one needs to bend just a hair more. I almost got that one perfect. Same with this one. This one actually needs to, to bend up a little bit more. So let's, in fact, this one here, I can just make an adjustment like this because that's almost perfect. Let's put this back on here and see. All right, so now, if it's shown in the camera, right here is just perfect. The angle is perfect. This one needs to go a little bit more, but this one I'm gonna put the tool on there and bend it some more. I have my tool back on there, and let's just move this up a little bit more. Now what I think's happened, and that barely moved, and I think the reason is because when I bend it up, these two edges are touching right here and not letting me bend it anymore. So if this isn't enough, I may have to file this down a little bit to allow this to bend up a little bit more. So let's go see if that worked. All right, this part is perfect, the back is perfect, and it looks like I need to still go just a tad more on the front piece. So I think what I'm going to have to do in order to do this 
is file just a little bit of this away so that it will, it will allow me to bend this a little bit more. All right, so I took it to the workbench. I ground this down just a little bit. I was able to bend it a little bit more. Well, let's put it on here and see how close we got. Okay, the bottom's lined up, the back is good, and this looks just about perfect. Maybe just a, a little tweak. Look at that, that's perfect. I'm happy with that. We can move on now to the front and the back bends. Now to make this front bend, it's pretty much a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna put my clamp on here. Hold this end down and let's bend this one pretty much 90 degrees. That looks close enough for now. Looking at this trim piece, I now have the front bent all the way down to the back. Now your amazing cameraman, myself, when I bent this, I completely forgot to film it. But this is a little bit of a different bend. All of these other bends are just nice straight bends. This one here is more of a sweeping curve. That curve goes right here in this corner. And you can see how the skin has a nice curve to it. And what we're trying to do with the trim piece is sort of match this curve. All these other ones here, like this, are a simple bend. Whereas this one is more of a curve. If we look at the instruction manual, it tells us exactly how to make that curve. What we do is we put three lines on the aluminum instead of the one bend line. Now, since I didn't film this, we can sort of recreate it here. So what I've done here is that little, I've drawn the, the cutout, which would be this cutout right here. That's what that black mark is there. And you can see how I have the three lines drawn. So this first one would have been the regular bend line. And then, I don't know, maybe 20 degrees either side of that we make another line. Now what we would do is use our crescent wrench for this. And you can see I have two different sizes here. I have a smaller one and a bigger one. I use the bigger one for this. And how I did this was I just went on the, the first angle, then straight, and then the third angle. And each one, you're just bending very slightly. And as you go around and kind of make those three bends, it comes into a nice curve like that. It's actually pretty easy to do. With all of the bends being complete, I have now clamped this to the fuselage. And all I did was cut a couple pieces of scrap wood to put under the clamp. And that holds it firmly in place. And of course, all I'm gonna do now is just match drill all of these holes. After I've drilled a few random holes and put enough Clecos in there to hold it in place, I just remove the clamps and I will open up all of these holes to the proper size. And then when I get to the very front, this piece here will get drilled in. There's five holes that, that'll get marked on here and drilled into the steel frame. Here's an update. All of the holes are now drilled to the final size except the front. But what I've done on there, you can see on the very top, I've put a little black mark and that indicates the center of the tube. So I will take this off, draw a line down there and evenly space five rivet holes.
Well, now that this bottom doubler piece is fully drilled and installed, or clecoed in place, it's time to add the last piece of this, which is simply an angle, and it's going to get riveted here, and that just continues this door seal all the way up to the top. Now, one of the things you might notice if you're building this airplane is the top, or the, this piece is a little bit too long, and it's sitting on top of this big uh, wing attach point. So what I'm gonna do is just mark the bottom of that where I need to cut it. It looks like right about there. So I'll cut that, it'll fit in here, we'll mark our holes, and then drill it the same way we did the bottom piece. I only had to cut about a half of an inch off of the top to have it fit in here. So here it is. Now I just need to draw a line and mark some holes. And as I always say, it's very important for you guys, I think, to clean up the edges on here. This edge is fairly sharp, so I took sandpaper and just kind of went over that edge so it doesn't feel sharp. Up on top here, I've rounded the corner so there's no sharp 90 degree angle. All your pieces of your airplane should uh, be built with the utmost in care. If we look at this page in the Super Duty plans, we can see that to drill the holes, we need a pitch of 40. And what that means is every, those holes are 40 millimeters apart. So I've already measured on my fan tool a pitch of 40. So I will just put this on here and trace all the holes. of when I install this piece is I want it to be perfectly straight with this bottom piece like I don't I want to make sure it's not on here like this or like that it's got to be perfectly straight so the way I'll do that is I'll just take this steel ruler and I'll put it on the back side here like this that holds them perfectly straight to each other and then while I have that held there I'll drill two holes and then once two holes are drilled, obviously it's not gonna move. I can go through and drill the rest of the holes. I have one hole drilled in the bottom and one up near the top. So now this piece won't move. And just like the bottom, I'll go and drill all those out to the final size. Now my door seal here is completely done. It's actually ready to rivet. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to take this off and paint it separately. Uh, I'd like to paint it with the airplane so I could get the rivets painted, but the, it's just going to be too much work, I think, to, to tape this off when I paint the outside of the airplane and then try to get back behind here and stuff. So I'm going to paint these separate. Uh, you could polish this if you want to. For example, on my Cruiser, I thought it looked much nicer polished than painted because it matches the gear. And also, as people get in and out, they're not gonna scratch the paint off of this trim piece if it's polished. If you are just going to rivet it now without painting it, just be aware that there are two places here where these striker plates get riveted also. Um, somewhere around here, this is for the, the door, the, this is what the door latches on. You can see these in my cruiser, how that works. And there's another one that goes up front here. So just before you start riveting, you know, look ahead a little bit in the manual because you'll have to put on these striker plates also. Well, that finishes up the pilot side and the passenger side. Now, the next step would be to install these pieces here that go up in here. Um, but for me, I'm having a little bit of an issue with these fitting correctly, so I do want to talk to Roger about that. Unfortunately, Roger's on vacation right now. So uh, the normal progress would be to get these installed. Once these are installed, I could build my doors. But since I want to talk to Roger before I work on this, I'll show you what I'm going to work on instead. Now, one of these years, I'm going to make another video explaining a little bit more about the pits that I bought. It's an S1E. It was built in 1989. 
and uh, it hasn't flown for quite a while. So I bought this knowing it's going to be a little bit of a project. And it's turning out to be a little bit bigger of a project than I thought. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that it has a bag magneto because when I go to the right mag, it drops about five or 600 RPM and gets really, really rough. Uh, so I had my buddy who's an A&P come out and help me take a look at the mag. And what we found out first is they had the key switch wired backwards. So when you're grounding out the right mag, it's actually grounding out the left mag. So we switched that around uh, to get that correct. And one of the other things we're thinking of before we take out the magnetos, because it is extremely cramped in here and it's going to be hard to get to these magnetos. We want to check the spark plug wires first because our thinking is if we have a bad spark plug wire, when that magneto is running and the other one's ground out, then it would only be running on three cylinders at that point, which could explain the RPM drop and the rough running engine. So my buddy actually has a tester for all the spark plug wires, which I've just borrowed from him. So I want to test each of these wires and make sure they are good before I rip out a magneto. So maybe for the next day or so, I'll take a little bit of a break from the Super Duty and get a little bit more done on this pits. I don't think it's gonna fly this summer, but hopefully I can work on it throughout the winter and get it ready for next summer. And uh, this baby will see the air again.